We'd like to now open this up to a larger discussion from the uh, audience, and we have a tweetful microphone that we can circulate in the back. Um, could you stand up and could people yes, identify yes, themselves and where yeah, they're from? Yeah, yeah, I'm Veronica Benhol Thompson and I will be in one of the workshops afterwards. I will give uh, a slight uh, PowerPoint presentation there. Um, I, I, I fully agree with Stefan and um, however, I, I would like to, to know more about um, your critique against uh, local currencies. Because um, I think we, we have to make um, a, a differentiation between the local market and uh, remember that uh, Polanyi, he, he wrote a lot about markets and he says there we have different types of markets. So I think the local market is something different to the global market and it, it has different rules more connected to the commons. So as we need uh, a period of um, transition, <laughs> I think that, uh, and I'm a fan of and a member of a transition town movement, um, I think what we need is um, to think about the, the, how, how we get um, in, in, within our larger local communities, take a town, uh, how we can share our commons uh, um, re results. So I think at, at, a, at a local, in a local place, um, in the place, the market is something different. So, and it can be something different still, or it, mu it must use another type of money. So this would be a local currency. So I would like to hear your answer. Stefan or Roberto? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Let's, let's get uh, several questions first before... And it's a discussion, not something that... That's right. We'd like to have other people who might have responses from the audience to these questions to participate too. Walter. My name is Walter Tebbens from the Free Knowledge Institute. I have also um, some comments um, on Stefan's piece. Well, Roberto's piece was really interesting, um, but I wanted to comment something on Stefan's piece about you were saying um, you should not s uh, sell products to the market. And I agree completely with that uh, in the sense that we should then be clear what is the product. I mean, in the case of if you say software, if, if that would be considered a product, we don't need to sell the software. It's free software, we're talking about a commons. So you can sell maybe the service if you want to interact with the market still, right? For a transition to a new society. In the case of the books, uh, if we write a book or an article, uh, that can be uh, commons based, so it can be under a free license. So we shouldn't sell and privatize that knowledge, but we can, um, gain a reputation and maybe come to speak at a conference uh, and earn our money otherwise. I hope that's also in the line you were thinking. This was a short comment. Why don't we pass the mic over here? Um, I wanted to, to utter an, an kind of awkward feeling uh, which I had already yesterday and still today and where I think this conference is, is um, making a big mistake, which is essentially to see a big player in today's world only as a threat, which are the robots, uh, your, your robots. You know, it, uh, they are essentially the enemy in this discussion. And I think you, you tended at a, a, a possibility to deal with this uh, robot, which is taming the robot. And I think there is a big tendency out there, there is a big movement out there about taming the robots. And it's not present here, it's not part of this discussion, and it's a big problem. And this is partly the corporate social responsibility movement where it goes beyond greenwashing, and there's a reality there. There are corporations who try to, do, to produce value for, which are more complex than just the bottom line on, uh, you know, on the paper. They are trying to produce value for communities. They're trying to, to uh, produce value for, for the environment. And there are markets which are more complex 
it's not just the being the cheapest t-shirts, but there are markets which are being transformed, which are about a t-shirt which is produced in a socially and environmentally responsible way. And I think this uh, commons movement will remain uh, a leftist fringe movement if it leaves out this discussion about taming the robot. And I think that I would say that would be the next steps for this discussion. Thank you. Customer. Yeah, I share that view. I, I must also uh, thank you for, let's say, uh, jumping in uh, the discussion on the many schemes I tried to outline yesterday by taking very uh, strong uh, position for or against some of them. But uh, uh, I, I also share the view that uh, uh, a desire to a uh, guarantee purity of the commons mechanism uh, is uh, actually uh, uh, does not correspond uh, to anything we have seen in the history of, uh, of the commons. Uh, they always interacted with foreign things, with uh, foreign to communitude, <laughs> let's say, uh, and, uh, and also uh, would uh, put them in niches. But I have a more precise question regarding when uh, something which is a really hotly debated issue about uh, when you get resources from the markets around, uh, how should they be distributed within the commons? And you made the point that they should not be distributed according to uh, computation or according to uh, local uh, credits in currencies, but rather according to needs. I would just like to, to, to state that needs are very complex issues. They are not, you know, they are not necessarily, for example, if you look at the cultural commons, first of all, they are being built today. They are not like something which exists. They are, we are in the process of instituted, instituting them. We are in the, and uh, in that process, a great discussion within the commons is what needs do we have or as the commons, as the <coughs> commoners. Yeah? And these needs are not necessarily exactly the same thing that the need of the individuals composing the commons. They, they can be, for example, we, we might want rewards to be based on uh, uh, interest showed by commoners for works, or we might, or preference about which work should exist. This is a need, an internal need. It's, but it's a need of the commons as an ecosystem. So I, want, I would like a clarification of what you meant by need, if you meant just individual needs or needs of the ecosystem so it functions well, the, the commons ecosystem. Let's have some questions from over on this side. Uh, yeah, mic oh, there's a mic over there, okay. Hi, this is Neil, and um, I, I wanted to address the gentleman who talked about the narrative that we hear um, about, I, I'm not sure I understood, but it sounded like um, protecting ourselves from corporations. Was I getting that right? Yes, I mean, it's not about just the corporations. It's a big part of today's business. Uh-huh. Yeah. Only, right. the, only the enemy, and I would say it's about taming the corporations, changing, transforming corporations, and there, there are business people in this room who are doing business and they try to do business in a way that it enhances and protects its commons, yes, right. in communities, instead of destroying it. And this reality, which is a, a growing reality in the business world, is not present in this discussion, and I would say it's a big mistake if we leave this out. Right. Good, thank you for recapping that. Now I, I totally get it. And, and, and I also, uh, I, I agree and would add, um, I agree in the sense that this should be an inclusive movement, I mean, as a commons, that we shouldn't exclude others to come into this discussion no matter where they are. And we should uh, look at everyone as an, in transition themselves, moving towards something better for everyone. Um, I would add also that, that uh, I think there's multiple narratives. Um, there's, there is the activist narrative, a narrative of resistance and uh, pointing to a, a, an enemy. 
Um, but there's also, I think the, transmi uh, the transition movement has a narrative which is kind of neutral, actually, which, um, you know, they want to progress sort of independent of government or, or the, the market economy and just get the work done, roll up their sleeves. Um, so corporations are neither the enemy um, or a friend. And I, I, but I do think there is room here for development of, of, your, of that narrative which you speak of, which is, well, how then can corporations, um, you know, participate in this with, without, without destroying, you know, what could become and what the commons could mean uh, to, to us? Let me have, let's have a round of responses and then we'll have a second round of questions. We have 15 minutes left. Uh, so Stefan and Roberto, why don't you address some of the issues that have been raised? Can I have the mic? Okay. Well, so many questions. Um, first, thank you that you accept my provocation. Um, I th for me, the corporations are not the enemy. You, you got me wrong. I think you have to understand that it's not a problem of a special entity of a, or of a person. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem of that we, that we produce something which, is, which runs out of control even against the corporations and people inside corporations who want to do better. And well, I accept that there are people who want to do better inside corporations. But I say it's the wrong way. We cannot change the corporations because they act into a logic which are also alien for the corporations itself because they, they, don't, they don't make a decision, well, let's make profit. No, they have to. They have to because they have to invest, they have to improve their, their machinery or whatever because if they don't want to go out of the market, they have to do it. So there's a logic they have to follow. And okay, it's right that in some local circumstances or niches, we can um, modify some, some aspects of acting of corporations. That's a possibility. But globalization gives a huge speed, huge push towards uh, generalizing competitiveness on a global level. So this, this possibility is reduced, reduces to a small amount. And to the question of local currency, for me local currency um, try to solve some problems, but they don't solve all problems I addressed especially the problem of post-mediation. Post-mediation means you first sell and try to get money, be it a local currency or the official one, and then um, you, 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 you look after what, what, is, what, what, are, what are the problems. And for me, this is a main problem of a currency, but it's only a number. And it's different if a, a project um, uh, aims to, to, to look for numbers, how can we increase this number? Or if they are looking uh, for how, what do we need and how can we produce it and how can we distribute it internally? So then we come to the needs. Uh, there's no difference between my need and the need of the, the commons in general, because my need is part of the need of the commons. And the logic of the commons is that I only um, fulfill or, or, or satisfy my need if the need of the others are satisfied. This is the inclusive logic by principle, not, not, not in reality. We have a lot of examples where this is not uh, working, so, so we have no guarantee. But in principle, we can implement a logic where satisfying my needs is equal with satisfying the needs of others. And we have to invest our intelligence to find these ways. So this is, for me, the power comes from, from the fact that it's not so simple. It's horrible, complicated to, to mediate these needs, to, to have a dialogue. How can we do this under these and these and these restrictions? This is not, a simp not simple, it's complicated. But we cannot uh, give this to the market and say the market solves it for us. This is clear, okay, I don't, this is not the difference. But uh, we, we have to do it by communication and dialogue and so on. 
before producing, before doing what we want to do. Roberto, do you have a quick? Yeah. Let's try to keep it quick so we can. Uh, well, uh, I was careful not. Uh, I tried not to use the word enemy, but certainly uh, I wanted to emphasize that there is a big problem when uh, an entity which is not accountable to human beings just goes ahead with its decisions, uh, even if it affects uh, families, communities, and so forth, because it is profitable. That's a big problem. We may have all the best interests uh, in trying to manage uh, commons uh, according to uh, what will be good for the whole community but if a corporation comes in and says this I need this I want this then we again have a big problem so uh, this problem with uh, uh, an automaton uh, which is the term I used uh, that does not obey human beings and does not uh, care whether it injures human beings, that's the problem I raise. And this has been foreseen, as I said, by science fiction. It's very early on when uh, automata were still uh, figments of imagination. And uh, th so they, that's why they uh, uh, formulated these three laws. And what I'm saying is that we must put corporations under control. For example, even in Europe, uh, Monsanto wants to sell GMOs here. And Whatever the people of Europe want, they will sell GMO shit. So that's a big problem. And uh, it will happen uh, on all commons. Uh, when corporations take interest in a particular commons, then you have this conflict. Uh, on the matter of uh, 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 the other discussion on the different approaches and experiments in the relationships between commons and markets, my attitude is a kind of a suspended disbelief. We need all kinds of experiments uh, to try this and that, uh, variations, and perhaps there's no single magic bullet. We will have to have a whole range of solutions, and different people may prefer different solutions, different communities may settle on different arrangements, and the whole diversity of it all may be part of the strength of the movement. Thank you. Julio has a quick comment, and I'd like three quick Com uh, comments or questions, because uh, we don't have much time, so just three, keep your comments or questions short. Julio. Still? Yeah. You may wonder why I am, as a representative of a business group, are organizing a panel which two persons with st which present strong critics against business. The reason is that um, we from the business side know, or some of us know, there is this strong critics in the comments movement against us. So we have, to f we have to deal with this, and we have to understand these critics on the one side. The second point is, what seems for me really obvious now is that in big parts of the commons movement, there is one influential picture or idea coming from Karl Polanyi, the idea that the market or corporation also are disembedded, disembedded from the society. And that, I'm thinking, creates a specific political strategy. I don't think so. I don't think that this theory, this influential theory, and this idea and this picture from the disembedded corporations is true. It's, a, it's theoretical, not true, and even not in fact. But it's a huge problem. I think corporations are part of this novel social behavior. And that would create absolutely different strategies um, if we believe in this picture, if, if corporations are only embedded even now and even the behavior from Nike or big auto corporations is embedded in our normal behavior. So I find it really important that the commons movement thinks about how influenced was this theory from Karl Polanyi in this picture mm -hmm. and if we should not use or thinking about new pictures to understand the activities of corporations and companies. Okay, thank you, thank you Julio. Very, very quick questions in the back. Let's, yes, gentlemen. Yeah, um, Mark Mascarenas, one from J uh, Jazzicon. Um, the way I see that, 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 that we have a, an, there's an inside strategy and an outside strategy, right? And the inside strategy is is aligning with corporations or the state to buy us time, right? The, you leverage the power of corporations in the state to maybe help us with our ecological commons, like save our air or our water. And these are sort of well-meaning corporations, right, that are 
maybe trying to act in our common interests, potentially, and also out of their own self-interests. And there's an outside strategy, too. And the outside strategy is to build up resistance to corporations and corporate power, build social equity and build democracy, and, and build the concrete alternatives we need to sustain an econom economy, right? And I, I see an efficacy in, in the inside strategy, but it's a short-term strategy, and we need a long-term strategy, which is going to be an outside strategy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, right here. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. it's right here. If it's, I'm Thank sorry. you for um, for your very imaginative uh, narration, and thanks for challenging me, Stefan, uh, because I'm I'm a currency designer, if you like. And uh, as you uh, as you stated, we need the right interfaces. We need to design the interfaces, but at the same time. Uh, you sort of uh, leave out the whole part of money. You, you, you sort of eliminate uh, this uh, part of design, this element of design. And um, I think there are ways to uh, design money and to understand money differently uh, in a way that you can address all these problems that you, uh, that you mentioned, like, uh, like uh, the, how did you put it, um, the post-mediation problem between needs and offers. If you understand the functions of money and you separate them, you can put them together again in a different way. Uh, that might sound quite abstract now, but uh, you have a function that is uh, investition, that is uh, investing in assets that produce an output. And if you, uh, if you distribute money first, that can only be used to invest in the assets, then you have addressed the needs before the production starts. And then you distribute the outcome. Uh, and to that cut. has to do with the abundance that you were talking about. That's uh, right, right up here and then right here. That, then we'll have to, I'm sorry, we'll have to conclude it with, except for some after the panel. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan Krall, uh, GTZ, German Development Corporation. I'm working in the agricultural sector, and I have to say again something on, on markets, because uh, commons, the origin of commons is agriculture, almende, uh, pasture. That, that is the origin, and there has always been commons and market, and it is still the case. If you look to, uh, and you come from a developing country, if you look to developing countries, markets, whether it is local, regional, or even international, it's essential for farmers to get out of the poverty trap. So if you look to, to watershed management comments like in Latin America, 100 farmers manage a watershed and they produce vegetable. They have to sell it on the market to have income, to generate income, to send children to school or to buy inputs for the next production, seed, fertilizer and, and others. So I mean it's complementary and there's not, it's not a competition. We need commons and we need markets and we cannot exclude markets. If you exclude markets, you cannot, you cannot make agriculture in developing countries. It's excluded. And even international markets are important because if a community is producing coffee, they can't drink all the coffee in, in, the, in the commons. They have to sell it elsewhere. And uh, it is exported and it brings a very good income to people to generate income to get out of the poverty trap. So we have, to be, we need markets. Right here, right, right here. One, this will be long. One very, very quick final comment, and then very quick responses from both. Yeah. I, I am I interested? So let me talk, please. Okay. So I think in terms of the uh, governance, there is a clear distinction between market and uh, commons, but in terms of sustainability of the commons, uh, I, as uh, previous comments, I think we have to move into hybrid solutions. And also in terms of the relationship with the market, I mean, all the markets are not the same. One thing is capitalist approaches to market, and another thing is uh, a social economy. Why not to uh, collaborate with uh, social cooperatives, for example? And yes, we have to make a, a, a resistance to the cooperative uh, um, violation of the principles on the, of, the, of the commons. 
like uh, with the emergency of the new economy of Google or or Yahoo, all of that, which have monopolistic uh, positions in their market, but that is not all in the same pot. We have to differentiate with type of uh, of uh, of uh, markets. Uh, it's good to 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 make uh, uh, connections to to assure the sustainability of the commons and which type of markets and dynamics we have to resist. Yes, and in this I would agree with you. Thank you. Um, well, just take my 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 positions or my my criteria and check how these different markets act and if they fulfill these criteria or not. You may be right that there are differences, but my main um, my main um, saying was that there is an underlying logic which these different markets all have in common and we have we cannot we cannot avoid market order to say we, we, we live it out they are there but we can only live good with markets and try to to put them in the, in the background if we understand that they have a basic logic and this base, basic logic is not always in, in according to our needs but against, or often against our needs. So it's not, I understand that in the structure we have that uh, some, some, some cooperative producing coffee needs the world market. But this is not a solution, it is a problem. This is a problem. So we have to go more into detail and I want to stop here and Thank you very much. Yeah, quick comment. Uh, my input will be that it probably depends on the scale. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, when the scale is small, uh, there are lots of benefits of the market that uh, we can identify. But as the scale becomes bigger and bigger, then we lose the benefits and all the bad things come in. It's, it's been it's been recommended that because this is a topic of uh, obvious and uh, more long-term interest that we raise it again at the plenary at the end of the day because it, it clearly deserves more inquiry and discussion. Or we can also deal with it and the innovation workshops because it's clear that's a really important question for the future of the commons movement and we should find different answers, perhaps not solutions. So thank you all for coming and we can continue the conversation if you'd like up here.